Um, I'd like to demonstrate how to determine or measure the resonant frequency of a um, simple coil. Um, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a coil. Uh, this is a um, 26 gauge magnet wire. Very simple coil. I mounted inside of a CD gel case just for convenience. Um, it's 10 turns and uh, it's got an 8.5 centimeter diameter. Doesn't really matter because uh, we're going to measure it anyway. We don't need to do the math uh, uh, in, in this in this method. So I just have it connected to some breadboard, and these are just some paper clips just to make it more convenient. So a couple of things you're going to need is obviously a capacitor because you're going to make a LC coil. I have here a uh, 104 uh, capacitor. I'm going to put uh, parallel um, to uh, the coil. So this is the say the positive end on that rail, and then this is the negative end on the second rail there. So this is all in parallel right here. Um, I'm going to need a couple of pieces of hardware actually. Obviously, uh, you'll need an oscilloscope, you'll need a function generator, and you'll need a frequency counter. Now the frequency counter, sometimes your uh, uh, a voltmeter such as this fluke will have a frequency counter on it. Um, if you don't have a frequency counter, it's going to be pretty impossible to do this. So you'll need those three things. Uh, without it, you might as well press stop and move on to some other method. But uh, anyhow, uh, this method is quite good. It's useful for finding a resonant frequency of pretty much any coil, including Tesla coils. Um, so let's, uh, let's begin. You're going to attach everything in parallel. So this is the, uh, so for my oscilloscope probe, I've got my, I guess you could call that the ground cable, I suppose. So I'm going to attach that uh, in parallel to everything. Um, I have an extra alligator clip attached to the probe because it's more convenient this way. So I'm going to attach that uh, there. And um, that's just my probe. So I need to generate um, a signal. So I'm doing this one-handed. Here's my function generator. I'm going to attach that here. I guess I should put red on red, just be consistent. All right, red on red. And then, so now my function generator and my probe are attached. Um, <clears throat> now I can do this uh, right now um, and actually get a reading, but I want to I count the frequency. So I need to add the frequency uh, counter on there somehow. It's getting a little crowded. And get over here. Where are you? There you are. Okay, so it is a bit of a crowded mess, but let's take a look. So how do you do this? Well, you want to turn on, uh, I don't have my frequency generator on, but what I've learned is you go ahead and turn it on, and uh, I have the oscilloscope probe uh, set to, um, in this case, uh, what is that, 2 millivolts at uh, 2 microseconds. Um, I don't have the power on the function generator at, at any really high level. It's, it's just barely on. So I just turn it up till I get a, a reading. And um, what I need to do is, what you're looking for is to, oh, maybe a little bit more power there. Uh, you're looking to find where the, uh, maybe a little more power. Um, find where the voltage peaks, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So. I'm going to, I've got the function generator at 100 kilohertz in the sine wave. So, adjusting at the same time, I'm looking for where, where is it? Sorry, I lost it somehow. Oh, huh. uh, let's see, let me turn the level down. And there should be a dip. Oh, this is the 104. This is the 104, so it should go lower. It should go really low. Let me turn this down some. There we go. That should be better. Bring that up. Sorry. Um, okay, that's the dip we're looking for. So um, the problem is with the 104, the circuit that I have, the 104, it, it's so close to 100 kilohertz um, that the uh, it's not easy to see. 
So let me bring this up a bit. Okay, so now we can see what I'm looking for is a point at which it goes up the peak and comes down. I want to find the very, very top of that and then count, look at, look at the frequency counter and find out what it is. So I'm going to go down on the frequency meter and you can see that I've got 100 kilohertz, okay, all the way down. Now I'm going to bring this up slowly. I'm going to, I'm going to really, really try to see where this thing tops out at. See how it's going down again? But it topped out somewhere. Now it's going down. I'm looking for that peak. And that peak is, visually, I see that peak around there. So now I'm going to look back up. And that's my resonant frequency. That's the frequency where the voltage is at a maximum. Okay? So 131 kilohertz around there. You know, it's, it's not perfect, again, but uh, it's a good method. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, turn that off. And I'm going to come back here and replace the 104 with a 103. Again, trying to do this with one hand. Okay, so there's a 103 in there. Now, the 103 is uh, point oh one um, microfarads. So, well, the 104 was point 0.1 microfarads. So this should be a much higher resonant frequency because it's discharging a lot faster. It doesn't have as much capacitance. So let's take a look again. So I'm going to turn on... Uh, my uh, signal generator. Now I have my signal. I don't need much power. Still at a sine wave, 100 kilohertz. I'm using kind of the same divisions here. I may need to change that. Uh, I might make that a little bit larger because it's easier to see. And then uh, let's just take a look. So I started at 100. It's rising. It's rising. It's rising. You know, I'm gonna have to improve. I'm gonna have to bring this down some. Okay. So it's rising, it's rising, and now it falls. You see how that fell again? It's getting smaller, the voltage is getting smaller, the frequency is increasing. So now I'm going to bring that back, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to top, it's going to get to a peak right around there. So let's zoom into that. Hold on, let me stretch out my time. It's right there. So let me zoom in, it's too high. So now I'm going to use this to determine where it peaks out. Not there, obviously, and not there, right around there. Now I'm going to take a look at my frequency counter, and sure enough, it's at 406 kilohertz. So uh, this method works with the theory. Um, anyhow, try it. It's really easy. Just make sure everything is wired in parallel, and you do have to have the right gear. Thank you very much.